What is up, beautiful people? I'm your host, Stephanie, on Stop Driving Cruise Control and Take Control. Thank you for returning back and tuning in. Last episode, we started up a series on the different kind of depressions, and we spoke on major depression. So today, I'd like to talk about persistent depression. Each depression has a very similar symptom to major depression. The difference with persistent depression is the length of how long it lasts. When you have persistent depression, it lasts two years or more, and it feels like a constant battle of being depressed and feeling fine. So it's not necessarily about the intensity of the symptoms. The key diagnostic of it is the long duration of it. Imagine grocery shopping, and you live on the second floor. So you decide to take everything in one load, in one trip, so you load up both arms, close the trunk with your head, and try walking up the stairs with all that weight on you. It's heavy, it's draining, and tiring, right? Now, stay on that first step for a bit with this weight on you. Carry that weight for a moment. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't last two seconds. So that grocery weight is full of your emotions, your disgust of yourself, your life, your upbringing, and how you literally feel like nothing in, in life and you're miserable. Carrying that weight and feeling like there's no way out of this is the gateway to major depression. Because we get these feelings and we just sit in them. No talking about it no self-help, nothing because we're so clouded in our negative thoughts that we forget there are sources out there. There are people who are willing to help me and us to take that first step, but the fear of our own thoughts pause us from reaching out and getting that help. But with persistent depression, it often starts out when they're young as kids. So when you get older, you think these feelings are a part of you. Of your everyday character so you legit think being that sad is who you are and there's no change in it because that's how you've been and since you've been this way since you were young which is another reason why they don't talk to even think they don't even think to talk about it to anybody because they think it's 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 part of them they think that's who they are and there's no way of changing it so they themselves are unaware that they're depressed and it just is like that's just who they are, and that's not who you are. It's not like they were born with it. It's more of a traumatizing thing that happened to them at such a young age. And when you're young, you don't you don't know how to fully express yourselves. So when we're young, we just think how we feel is supposed to happen, and everyone else is feeling that way. And even if it doesn't seem right in our minds, we still don't speak on it. We still let it linger within ourselves and that ties back to what I said in the intro where we just put things under the rug and just keep sweeping it under there until it gets higher and higher and higher now we're so deep in thought that we feel lost we don't feel like ourselves anymore and it's not as severe as major depression but being that way and feeling down all the time Definitely gets you into a major depression. Like I said, it's a gateway to major depression, which is why the symptoms are very similar. Social withdrawal, always wanting to be alone, not caring for anyone to be around, and or pushing everyone out of your life that is trying to stick around. Your low self-esteem, thinking that you're not worthy enough, you're not good-looking enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough. You just go to work and home, sleep, and everyone judges me so... Who cares? And you're worried about what other people think at the same time versus caring about how you feel about yourself. Having all these repeating thoughts pop up in your head of things people said about you. Oh, that person's so weird because they're quiet or they listen to weird music. They dress weird. They're a dork. No one likes them. Hearing all these things as a kid and growing up with those thoughts repeatedly all night and day, you grow up thinking of yourself that way, that it becomes a norm for you. So then the next person who makes another opinionated comment on you is just another added thought. And it's like, well, that's a new one. So you just add it on to the shit list of things people have to say about you. You can say it to yourself later on and you just dwell on it until you feel it and quote unquote realize that they are right. And the further down you go into that deep hole, you've just been digging all your life, focusing on what other people think about you 
and then matching that up with your own thoughts of yourself. And now, this is how you build your character. You're building your character against people's opinions on you. When, who who cares what they say? Who cares how they see you? At the end of the day, it's, you got one finger pointed at you and four of them pointing back at them. They got their own issues and they're putting it on you and, and you dwell on it. It doesn't affect them. It affects you. And that's one thing we got to get out of. We got we to gotta stop focusing on what other people think about us and start focusing on what we think about ourselves and, and just realize we're better than that, you know? And what blows my mind is how there are so many depression disorders, yet they all have the same symptoms. And I'm not sitting here trying to say one is greater than the other because they're not. They all fucking suck. They are horrible. They are, they're all discouraging and a huge vibe killer for yourself. But one thing I do know is they all have a solution. But the first step is with you, within yourself. Now, I drove myself so far off the deep end. But before I could go any further, I turned off that cruise control. I put my foot on the pedal and I took control. Now, there's a difference of physically taking yourself out of these situations and mentally staying in them. And I say this because a lot of people grow up in toxic environments and they move out the minute they get the funds to, but still feel drained, sad, alone, scared, unloved. So you did the physical part and you took yourself out, but mentally, you're still scared. You're scarred. You got to work on that too. So when you remove ourselves physically, it's a good thing, but emotionally, we're a prisoner. Just know and understand you're also the warden and you have that key to release yourself. You just got to find that in you. And once you find that on you, it's a whole new level to yourself that you're going to boss up and be like, Woo! who is you and where have you been hiding my entire life? But with this kind of depression, the first step is actually acknowledging the fact that you're depressed. Since you start off young and grow up with this, it feels like a part of you. And this is who you are, and you're always going to be like this. And to acknowledge that is to look deeper and really analyze how you feel, how sad you may get over the little things, how alone you feel when you get home from work and have nothing planned to do or no one to really talk to. And once you see that, and you see that it makes you feel down about yourself, work on it. And that's way easier said than done. Trust me, I know. You have to really want to change and really feel exhausted from this depression, from the way it makes you feel. Once you get to that feeling, the second step is is action. Now, man, when I tell you that this isn't easy and it doesn't take overnight, I'm serious. This is some hard work and dedication. It took me months and months to find a routine, to figure something out that helped me feel like there's a purpose in getting up. It took me so many, I'm going to try tomorrow and make my bed or wake up early in the morning. I'm going to try to do something that day. But then the day comes and it's four in the afternoon. I'm just getting out of bed, looking at my phone, scrolling on social media. And now it's eight o'clock and my whole day just went nowhere and I haven't done anything. And then you start freaking out because you're like, oh, snap. Did I even work today? Was I supposed to work today? So now anxiety kicks in. And you just start freaking out and you don't know how to function. So what do you do? You go back to bed. You grab comfort food real quick and then you go back to bed. And you just lay there continuously lost in your thoughts thinking all these negative things about yourself and how you let yourself down because you promised yourself the night before that you were going to wake up early. So now, not has everyone else failed you, but you failed yourself. But it's crazy how other people failing you affects you way more than you failing yourself. That's because of the lack of attention you give yourself, the lack of help that you give yourself, and the lack of love you give yourself. You know, try 
tricking your mind once in a while. Whenever your your subconscious tells you you're not worthy, you're not loved, shut that down, dude. Let it know that you are worthy. You don't know of what yet, but you know that you are. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. Everybody's got a light in them that will shine, but you got to take care of that. You got to plant that seed in you that will grow and be this happy, beautiful garden. You know what I'm saying? You don't water it. It's never going to grow. It's never going to expand. It's never going to shine. You keep neglecting it. It's going to stay the way it is. But there's always, there, you could always change it. And that's one thing that people don't understand that it's, they think it's not changeable. It's a whole process of hitting reset and trying again the next day and failing and doing it all over again. The thing is, when we do something so small, like when we finally do wake up early one day, it makes us feel big, accomplished. Like we can give ourselves a pat on the back and just feel good and amazing. But then the next day comes and it's square one again. And you feel like, damn, bro, I can't even make it two days in a row. So we just give up. But like I said, it's a process. A few more of those on and off days and our body starts getting used to that. Having that one or two random day out of the month to get up early to do something. That gives you more of a push to continue trying until your body gets used to now four more days out of the week to doing something productive and so on. Doesn't mentally make you better or no longer depressed, but it gives you a push when you realize you're doing something, you're capable of doing something other than laying down, sleeping all day or being up all night overthinking it. It gives you a push. It's like a little bit of adrenaline, you know, and this is a very short podcast today. Um, but I just want everybody to know who's out there. Just feel like this is it. This is me. This is who I am. There's no changing that. There is. Keep your head up because there is changing that. You just got to keep strong and try, 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 and try. You fall back down, guess what? It's okay. Get back up and try. Remember, it's a process and it's okay to not be okay. You are not your thoughts, you are what you do. And that's from a book I read. It's called Unfuck Yourself by Gary John Bishop, I believe. He is amazing. He's one of the guys that got me out of my situation. I would sit there and read that book. Even if I I don't know about y'all, but I don't like to read. I really hate reading. And I had to read the first chapter so chapter <laughs> several times. To finally understand. But I did it. It took me a month to read it. But I did it. In doing so, I felt so accomplished. But like, at the same time, the way he talks to you, the way he gets into your head. Dude, it's mind-blowing. And you you realize, yo, I could do this. I'm way better than this. You're way better than this. We're all way better than this. So if you feel like you need to start somewhere, I highly recommend getting that book. He also has a series to it, which is called Stop Doing That Shit and Get the Work Done. Highly recommend all that. And if you're not a reader, get on his podcast. He has a podcast as well. Um, I believe it's on Fuck Yourself as well. He also has audiobooks. Do some research. It doesn't hurt to do some research because you're not alone. There are sources out there. And there are people who are willing to help you. So just remember that. You're not alone. You're not your thoughts. You're what you do. So have a blessed day, everyone. And I hope to see you guys on Thursday. Stay tuned. Have a blessed day.